When it comes to money, Britain is a divided nation. The gap between rich and poor has grown by a third in the last decade and continues to widen. But how much does money really matter? Two families from opposite ends of the wealth divide are about to find out. The Wilde family's given up everything to live the good life. They're converting a field in Northumberland to a farm. Having remortgaged the house, we've now got two mortgages. <laughs> they may be poor, but they're loving their new green life. Hey, pig, pig. Just outside Manchester, in Soccer Star territory, you find millionaire divorcee and businesswoman Ampika Pixton. This week, she'll be waving goodbye to the open top roles, her lavish lifestyle, and going green. The only thing I think about when you talk about green is green handbags or green shoes. But how will the eco-friendly wilds handle living in luxury? I am going to think what's going on when I'm not there. Look at this kitchen! For one week, they're swapping homes. <laughs> Budgets. And lives. I can't even fit in the bath at home, can I? To discover if going green saves you money and even makes you happier. Yeah, this is like a stress free existence. <laughs> the Wild family lives just outside Newcastle upon Tyne. After 20 years, Kim, a teacher, and Dave, a landscape gardener, have risked everything to chase their green dream. We um, remortgaged our house and uh, got a mortgage on a, on a big piece of grass. <laughs> <laughs> They've bought a field and are converting it into an organic farm. No buildings, no outbuildings, no water, no electricity. Another route is to buy an established small holding, but mm. we've never been able to afford that, would no. we? Establishing the farm is a seven-day-a-week job, and it's a family affair. Rosie 9 and Archie 7 also have to help out. The Wilds would love to live on the farm, but they can't afford to build. At the moment, homes a three-bedroom ex-council house seven miles away. Gardener Dave has made the back garden a sanctuary, almost at no cost. So that was a big thing for me, because I wanted to make my own garden from scratch. I hadn't done other people's gardens for 20 years. Now I wanted chickens and put bees in the garden. So I did all those things, put a big pond in and a stream, imported loads of big rocks in, but then the kids came around and realised it was totally not child-friendly whatsoever. The most unsuitable garden you've ever seen yeah. for kids. Water, big rocks <laughs> and bees. <laughs> they try to live as eco-friendly as they can. We're both really passionate about the environment, aren't we? we? That's how we've been, you know, both our families have always recycled, have always been thrifty, have always reused things. They don't use pesticides and are working towards making the farm organic. Preserving rare animal breeds is a passion. There's a lot of British breeds um, that are going to disappear unless people farm them. In fact, all 11 native British breeds of pigs are all critically endangered. The farm has grown rapidly, so they've recently taken on some unpaid helpers. Mature students from Agricultural College getting work experience. There's a guy called Paul who does a lot of the livestock stuff and a girl, Laura, who uh, pretty much does the same. Everyone's kind of multitasks and does all sorts of stuff on the farm. The Wilds are making a living by selling their produce, but only just. Their income is around £25,000 a year, putting them in the UK's bottom 10%. Near Manchester, nestled amongst the homes of famous footballers, glamorous divorcee and one-time reality TV star Ampika Pixton lives in luxury. So I am a single mum who lives here in this house with my son, alongside my wonderful housekeeper, and four beautiful dogs. Ampika's home is a world away from the wild's eco lifestyle with energy bills to match. There are gas guzzling cars in the driveway, six bedrooms, and a heated private pool. The pool's on 24 hours a day. So the electricity bill for this property is about a thousand pounds a month. 
Thousands more go on shopping each month. Her dressing room contains over 80 handbags, 200 pairs of shoes, and much, much more. If you're working hard, you deserve to play hard. So if you want to treat yourself to lovely jewelry, to beautiful clothes, why not? You are not hurting anyone, and you don't need to feel guilty. Ampika has two businesses. One teaches beauty aesthetics, treatments such as microblading and dermal fillers. That smooth U-bend of when you go into the vein. Also raking in the money is her weight loss programme. After having son Jake 13 years ago, Ampika piled on the pounds, but then developed the Skinny Revolution programme. She went from a size 20 to size 8. Running two businesses means working long hours. My mornings normally start work-wise at half past eight, nine o'clock, and I'll work through until half past seven, eight o'clock at night. I don't have much spare time, and I certainly don't socialise. To cope with her packed schedule, Ampika has a full-time housekeeper, Nora. She also has a gardener, Willie. Despite their different lives, Ampika and the Wilds both admit they have a shared problem. They're so busy, they've lost track of where they're headed. You look at other people's Facebook and social media and they're, oh, I'm at the pub, oh, I'm at a spa. And I do think sometimes, oh, I wish we could carve out a bit more time for ourselves. One way of creating more family time would be to make the farm more profitable. They're hoping the swap week will give them ideas. I was a teacher, Dave was a gardener. We're not experts in business, we're not experts yeah. in marketing. So if there's things that we could learn, that would be brilliant. Ampika will be joined on her green adventure by her retired housekeeper, Leslie. Leslie's become Ampika's surrogate mum and best friend. They've also got a lot to learn. We're both extremely wasteful. And I think this will bring home, maybe to a degree, just how wasteful we are. I think it'll be a big learning curve for me, I think, anyway. I think it will be almost like a spiritual awakening. It's day one, and the wilds are first out the door. Heavy suitcases all round, but huge excitement. We're going to the bridge house. OK. Are you excited? Yes. Have you got the butterflies in your stomach? You know that yeah, apprehension. Yeah, I feel a little bit sick. You think it'll have a pool? I think it's going to have a pool. I hope it has a hot tub. I'm thinking, are we going to be turning off oh, down right. a country lane in the moment? And uh... No, I don't think so. Oh, there's a few cars on the drive. Don't oh. hit the jag. There's, like, chandeliers in there. Oh, my goodness. At first sight, the house outside Newcastle isn't what Ampika and Leslie expected for their green week. I'm thinking, like, lots of land. I'm thinking animals. I'm thinking at one with nature. <laughs> Hold on. The Wild family can't believe their eyes. Chandeliers in a kitchen. Oh, look at this kitchen. Oh, my. take your shoes off. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Look, we've got these little... Oh. It's a family of four. Oh. Dave and Kim must be mum and dad, the bigger baskets. And then Archie and Rosie. Oh, that is so cute. To my wonderful guests, relax and unwind, enjoy the pool and gym! <laughs> the garden looks oh, idyllic, it's Leslie. Look at it. It makes you realise what you've not had. Yeah. I was brought up by my grandparents and there wasn't. There definitely was no love in the house. Oh, Les. This you is got, just so lovely. You'll have all the loving that you need off me this week, Leslie. All the loving that you need off me. Both families now need to play detective. There's a special business book. Do you think that could be the lady? This could be their business? She does all sorts of, like, beauty things. Hang on a minute, Arch. Ooh, Botox. This is a little family wall of pictures, Leslie. I tell you what, Archie's a dead ringer for his dad. Dead cute. They're just a lovely family, aren't they, Les? They look a lovely mm. family, don't they? Some pictures there, look. In Manchester, 
they've discovered photos of Ampika's son, Jake. Oh, look, yeah, do you think this is the lady? Look, very glamorous. Yeah. On the staircase, yeah. yeah. And up the stairs, there's the biggest bath they've ever seen. This is a kind of bath I need in the house. Yeah! Daddy can't even fit in our bath by no. himself, yeah. Daddy. <laughs> they've explored their homes for the week. Now to find out how much spending money they have. Oh, Leslie, I was right, I was right. 20, 40, 60. 500, 600, 700, 100, and 67 pounds. 67 pence. 1,480 pounds, 15 pence? Yeah! Oh my goodness! You've got a family of four that live off a tenth of what my surplus cash is each week. And they'll be living their life less. They will be living the dream this week. I've got my money. <laughs> what me and your mum gonna have? They've swapped budgets. Now to swap the carbon footprint for each house. How do they compare? 27 tonnes. So this house produces 27 tonnes. And Pika's in for a shock. I cannot believe our CO2 emissions is 27 tonnes. And this house runs on seven tonnes. <gasps> I feel ashamed, Leslie. Now to swap lives. Maybe the week's activities will help convert Ampika to living a greener life. Deliveries, veg picking, feed, mow and Boris, egg packing and milk swift. Visit the beauty school <gasps> Thursday. Papa Day! Yes! I've just seen an invoice here and it says Wild Farm. This family's surname is Wild, right. so clearly they've got a farm. These are the jobs that they do on a daily basis. I am going to be having to do these jobs. Date night. That's definitely mean daddy. Leslie, let me just tell you now, the hands, the lashes and the hair will all stay in situ regardless of whatever tasks I've got to endure. Good luck with that one, my dear. Now it's a quick change and off to have a look at the farm. Good to see you. I'm Paul. Hi, Paul. My name's Ampika. This is Leslie. Paul, one of Kim and Dave's helpers, gives them a guided tour. All of these trees that you're seeing, these small trees, these are all planted by Dave and Kim. There are chickens and pigs to be fed, goats to be milked, and vegetable beds to be tended. For Ampika, this is going to be a hands-on week. Back at the swap house, a camera has been fitted where privacy is guaranteed and the truth can be told. I will be out like a light because I need to keep my energy reserves up because I don't know what tasks I've got tomorrow. There's too many things that get broken in this house for our family. I really am absolutely shattered. The pool, oh my goodness. I don't think we'll get them out all week, to be honest. <laughs> Coming up. A week on the farm is hard work, but Ampika gets stuck in. I think that those two seriously underestimate me. And a week of the high life gives the Wilds precious family time. We don't normally have a lot of time with them, because they're normally working. Kim and Dave Wilde have devoted all their time and money to establishing a small organic farm. Family life has suffered. Having a farm is really stressful. I wish we could carve out a bit more time for ourselves. Wealthy businesswoman Ampika has discovered her carbon footprint, and it's huge. I cannot believe our CO2 emissions is 27 tonnes. I feel ashamed, Leslie. Day two. The Wilds have their first lie-in for years. By the time they're up, Nora, Ampika's housekeeper, has done the weekly shop for them. There was enough there, probably for a month. So it does worry me a little bit that there's going to be quite a lot of waste. Kim and Dave grow most of their own food and avoid plastic packaging. Ampika's approach to shopping is a bit of a shock. Do you think the packaging or the, the plastic isn't it is 
an issue for her? Is that something you think she thinks about, or...? I think, um, yeah, I would say she would. Some things, like your meat, has to be wrapped up. But then why do supermarkets put apples in plastic wrap? When we go shopping, we sort of quite consciously pick certain products. Oh, that's a plastic carton, we'll get the cardboard one. I don't think that's maybe something that they really think about. Running a farm is a seven-day-a-week job, and on their first morning, Ampika and Leslie are running late. Farm worker Paul has already organised the first job, and it's a long way from the glamorous life Ampika's used to. We've got some moving of compost to do. We've got to get it onto the vegetable gardens. That is a ridiculous <laughs> amount of compost. I mean, I'm all up for challenges, Paul, <laughs> and I've got a lot of muscle, but that is a work for 50 men, not one. Right, the wheelbarrow, the shovel. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. It's your turn. So it's been a long time since I've done anything like this. Have a gardener, Willie, who comes every week. It's a wake-up call for Ampika. This is the reality of living the green life. I had to shovel all that from one side of the vegetable plot to the other on my own, unaided. Do you know what I think? I think that those two seriously underestimate me. Outside Manchester, housekeeper Nora has a big announcement. You're going skiing? Yeah, I better get changed. <laughs> oh, sorry. Never been skiing before, have we? We're in the actual snow. I don't know, we'll find out. The amount of time that the farm consumes has made family time as rare as their hen's teeth. Oh, I actually can't be stopped. The children are loving their day in the snow. Lean forward, Rosie. I've never been skiing before, neither has Archie. It, but the first time we did it, the, the man said that we were really good. Oh, well done. We were naturals. But it's not just sliding down the snow the children are enjoying. I've enjoyed having a lot of time with my mum and dad because we don't normally have a lot of time with them because they're normally working. It's very rare that the four of us go out and do like a day out or an activity together just because of the demands on the farm. It's only day two and the week's already bringing home to Kim and Dave the true cost of establishing the farm. I've been so focused on trying to get the farm up and running and the long-term goal of us living there and the kids being able to live there and sort of run free on the place that they kind of sometimes miss out on day-to-day -day stuff. A holiday with mum and dad on the ski slopes is now definitely on the children's wish list. Yeah, I would love to do it because you'd, like, go pew down the hill. Well, you wouldn't really be like Eddie the Eagle, though. <laughs> Oh, that just can't be stopped. Oh, well done, buddy. Back at the farm, Ampika's discovering just how hard Kim and Dave work every day. Come on. But I'm very tempted to just sit down very, very slowly and see if any of the chickens, hens, will come to me so I can just give them a little cheeky stroke. Ooh, you had a little shower there, didn't you, little shower? Will we get a chance to give any of them a cuddle? Here's the thing. Normally, with livestock, you're, we're not encouraged to right. have, make, have human a lot contact. of physical yeah, yeah, yeah. human contact. Right. With pigs, mind you, the pigs can oh. handle a bit of a scratch. I've never poked a pig with a stick before. It was a first time for everything. Pigs are nature's farmers. By moving them around, grass and weeds are cleared and the soil is fertilised, ready for the next crop to be sown. Oh, yeah. how old are those piglets? They were born last night. <gasps> last last night. night. Oh, my heart's just melted. They are absolutely adorable. Just think they are less than 24 hours. I'm in the element. I think this is my dream job. <laughs> in Manchester, family time's not over. Archie and Rosie are in the pool with Mum. The kids are just living their best life right now. 
They're in the pool for the second time already today, so they just think it's brilliant. After a mucky day on the farm, Ampika was looking forward to wallowing in a nice hot bath. But it won't be happening tonight. To keep the energy bill down, hot water is strictly rationed in the wild's house. I'm going to be synchronising my watch. She's got five minutes. Leslie's first to adapt to the new green lifestyle. Sounds like there's a lot of water going in there, Pete. A shower is much more eco-friendly than a bath. It's all about saving energy. It was a bird bath. I think I managed to get my ankles in and a bum cheek, and that was it before I had to get turfed out because Leslie was driving me insane. That's been two minutes. I didn't get two minutes. Day three. And at the farm, it's another early morning for Ampika and Leslie. There are eggs to be collected. So normally we'd be probably looking about 40 eggs minimum. A day? A day. Yeah. And then we might supplement that with uh, sort of 12 or so duck eggs per day, right. which sell for quite a good price, as you All can right. imagine. Uh, Dave's cousin has started a shop, mm -hmm. um, and he sells farm produce, some of theirs and some from other places, right. but all local. Ampika's business brain is still working overtime. I love their mindset. I like the way they live their life. My only question mark is, there is so few animals on that 12-acre plot, but it's a growing business. So as time evolves, I'm sure that they've got a master plan. The next stop is Dave's cousin's grocery shop to deliver today's wild farm eggs. Everything in the shop is sourced locally. For the first time in her life, Ampika's thinking about where her food comes from. What all the produce from the farm do you use in the products that you sell here? Uh, well, one of, one of the biggest sellers by far is, is the Wild Farm sausages. Really? Um, oh. Yeah, we also sell the pies and the, uh, the scotch eggs. Oh, don't mention scotch eggs. The three, three pound each. The impression that I get from the store and the wilds and their farm, um, it's all about bringing a community together. Thank you so much, Dave. Oh, take care, Steve. We'll you. see you soon. Bye bye. In Manchester, Dave's having valuable time out with the kids. Kim's joined Hayley, Ampika's personal assistant, for a guided tour of the business. She's hoping to pick up some money-making tricks she could use at the farm. Ampika runs a training school that teaches non-surgical cosmetic treatments known as aesthetics. Some of the most common are fillers, anti-aging treatments and permanent makeup. So we have a medical team who will teach the students. We'll have people that have had no experience whatsoever and then we'll have people that might be doctors, for example. A registered nurse can take a course at the academy for around £8,000, but a top-of-the-range aesthetics practitioner could earn in excess of £100,000 a year. Where do you think most of your trainees sort of hear about the academy? Is it social media or...? Um, I think social media and having a very good website. Maybe the success of Ampika's online marketing is something the Wilds could learn from. In terms of lifestyle, we'll probably differ quite a lot. The biggest similarity is work. She has her own business and so do we. When you have your own business, you put your heart and soul into it and all your time. Have you had any treatments before or would you consider it? Um, I haven't ever had anything done before. I, I definitely don't have the budget for it. <laughs> Probably a, a hard pass. <laughs> At the farm, Ampika's learning another lesson. If you grow your own food, you can get by on very little money. Laura, do the children, Rosie and Archie, get involved with the actual preparing and harvesting? Oh, yes. Children love to harvest the veg, yes. I mean, well, it's quite fun for children. Could Kim and Dave earn some extra money by hosting school trips to the farm? I think it'd be nice actually to bring, like, a little primary school here. Yes. I think the kids would love it, and it'd give them an insight into how things are prepared yes. before they're actually on your plate, yes. so you have a better understanding. Being on the farm is educating Ampika too. It's the first time in her life she's picked her own food. 
and it's changing the way she thinks. Wow! Oh, look at that. <laughs> it was a real deal having something sealed with such freshness without any preservatives or chemicals. So although there is quite a lot here and it's fresh produce so it only has a short shelf life. Yeah. So if things don't get used and don't get eaten, what happens to it? Nothing gets wasted here. And it'll go back onto the compost heap. It's just all reused, all recycled. I feel like I could actually live here. Yeah. This is like a stress-free existence. Yeah. Coming up, Ampika discovers the true cost of her fashion obsession. The fashion industry is the second biggest polluter in the world after oil. Gosh. Dave gets behind the wheel of an electric Porsche. You can feel so much power in it. But then finds his dream motor. Cool. Picking her own food has been a game changer for millionaire businesswoman Ampika. This is like a stress-free existence. Time away from the farm has reminded the wilds that there's nothing more important than family. We don't normally have a lot of time with them, because they're normally working. Day four, and for Ampika and Leslie, it's another 7 a.m. start. The goats need milking. Let's get this. Like falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> I love goat milk. So rich and creamy. <laughs> yeah, she's very calm yeah. now. I didn't think I'd be able to get her so calm, to be honest. The first thing was very satisfying and rewarding. Milking Swift. And I'm quite proud that my hands managed to extract some milk from her teeth. Is there enough in there? The cereal is mine. It needs to be properly filtered, yeah. you know, before we can consume it. Milk from their rare breed goats is very valuable. The high fat level makes lovely cheese, and Kim and Dave have big plans. But at the moment, the milk goes to the pigs. On the wild farm, nothing is wasted. Looks like a nice place out, doesn't it? Kim and Dave are continuing their search to find ways of making the farm more profitable. The key is expanding sales of their produce beyond the village shop. They're visiting one of Ampika's favourite restaurants on a fact-finding trip. We source all our milk, butter, cream, dairy products from literally 10 minutes down the road. Yeah, I think one of the things is maintaining a relationship with people. Yeah. So when you've got that core chef having that confidence to ring him and going, look, I've got X, Y, and Z available. So how, how do you guys find your suppliers? So local suppliers approach us. Uh, you know, you get the knock at the kitchen door at 11 o'clock on a Friday morning. Are you trying to just stay local or are you trying to broaden across the UK? Yeah. Or... Try and keep it within a sort of 50 mile radius. I'd stick by your guns and keep doing what you want to do. So if your product's good, people will come back for it. For Ampika, buying local is a new concept. She's come just down the road from the farm to see where the meat currently ends up. But first, she's interested to know how Charlotte became a butcher. Well, I've had the shop for eight years, and then before that, I did a two-year apprenticeship in London. Yeah, I fell in love with the trade, just doing wow. a part-time job at university. Gosh. Well, you've got to do something you're passionate about. So where does all this meat come from? So we get all of our stuff very local. Charlotte processes the wild's meat so they can provide sausages and other products to local shops and restaurants. Why would you say this was more eco-friendly than me going to the supermarket? I think, irrespective of packaging, the thing that's more eco is the fact that you can get exactly what you want. I've got elderly customers who'll come in. They always apologise for getting two rashes of bacon, but I don't mind as long as they're getting exactly what they want. Do you find that that cuts down on food waste? I hate food waste. I absolutely hate it. We make sure that people just get exactly what they want. We utilise absolutely every single bit of the carcass. They've decided on steak for tonight's dinner, and with vegetables and eggs free from the farm, it's not going to break the budget. So that comes to £20 and six pence. However, because you're clients of ours, it's £16. Ooh, woo! No better talk. Thank you. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm you very sure. much. See you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I think if Leslie and I can be economical this week, I think we could 
smash it and actually have money left over to give back to the Wilde family. In Manchester, Kim's been having a nose around and has found Ampika's energy bill. Look at the energy bill. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Bloody hell. 1,300. That amount is nearly the same as our entire household expenses, yeah. like mortgage, bills, everything. Obviously, the swimming pools, that room's really hot and, the, and it is a heated pool. Yeah, that's... That must be a massive expense. Te nearly 10,000 for electricity and nearly 5,000 for gas a year. As much as they're enjoying the luxury, they can't help worrying about the true cost of the high life in Manchester. Day five, Ampika's gardener, Willie, has woken everyone up. I'm Willie. I settled in, all right? What with the size of Ampika's garden, Dave's had a thought overnight. You could have some raised beds to grow some vegetables in. There's a lot of space out there, and it's not really getting used very much. He's hatched a plan to surprise her with a mini farm outside her back door. If I give you a list of stuff, could you get yeah, stuff for us? Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem, yeah. Yeah, see you, Thursday, right. man. Take care, Simon. Right. Cheers, see ya. It's not just the garden he's got designs on. All week, Dave and Kim have been worrying about the gas guzzlers in the drive. I wonder how much fuel this goes through. It's going to be about 200 quid to fill, I reckon. This morning, Dave's off to find an eco-friendly alternative Ampika might be open to. I've come to test drive the electric Porsche. Wow. Taking the £300,000 Porsche for a spin is a revelation. You can feel, like, like so much power in it. Like, do that again. That's quite good fun. It really shifted. Like, I didn't think a battery-powered car would have as much power as that did. I think it cost, like, did the guy say, 22 quid to charge it for the day. I reckon Ampika would like this. It's actually really easy to drive. This compared to the, the Rolls Royce she's got, which is obviously burning up fuel like crazy, I reckon she could go for something like this instead. Despite loving his time in the fast lane, over the road, Dave spots his dream motor, a second-hand tractor. Cool. Ampika's spent all week getting dirt under her fingernails on the farm. But today, she's up for a treat, an eco fashion fix. Hi. Welcome to a vintage wardrobe. <laughs> she's meeting Judy, who sells pre-loved clothes. This is shopping with a difference, I suppose. I used to be a personal shopper at Selfridges. Right. So I was the person who would have put you in all the designer labels. Okay. Around 20 years ago, I started a company selling vintage at affordable prices. Oh, wow. Which means you can get some of these items for under five pounds. Gosh. It's not just about buying things cheaply. The fashion industry has a massive environmental impact. A lot of this stuff is cotton, and when you buy new cotton, so for a pair of jeans, it takes 7,000 litres of water to make one pair of jeans. Gosh. The fashion industry is the second biggest polluter in the world after oil. And we all subscribe to this every time we go shopping. Well, when Judy started to tell me about the clothing industry, I was actually shell-shocked. I thought, where have I been? Today has been a life-changing experience. She can still shop for her beloved fashion, but differently. Your waist looks so tiny. I think that's something that would be really nice for you to wear when we meet the wilds later on in the week. Do you know what? It does make sense, doesn't it, really? Yeah. The Wilds hardly ever go shopping, but with loads of their weekly spending money left, it's time to splurge. I've said that they can have £100 each, which they've never had before. But old habits die hard. Kim starts them off at the charity shop. That's cool, isn't it? It's up to you. It's just like, you pick whatever you like. I've never had an opportunity to just, like, spend a lot of money. I think if you just kept spending and spending and spending money, you would just eventually just get bored of it. Archie buys a big box of second-hand Lego and he's happy. 
He doesn't need to spend a penny more. It's date night tomorrow, so Kim's after a new dress. It's time to ask advice from her personal shopper. Is that nice? I think I should go for something like that. Oh, I'm more of a blue fan. What do you think? Kim's got her dress and the children want to go home. With the swimming pool calling, they don't care if there's money left over. When they get home, the pool has to wait. Gardener Willie has arrived with a job to do. Sunflowers, tomatoes, lettuce and herbs all need planting in the vegetable garden Dave's creating for Ampika. As each day in the swap week passes, Dave's realising that establishing the farm has taken over his life. He's not been spending quality time with the children. you just got to be careful, I guess, it, years down the line, you, you, you don't look back and go, all right, well, I, 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 sh I should have taken more time to be with the family. Does it smell lemony? Yeah. Yeah, that's called lemon time. Can you do the water and, and then that's you free after that and you can go swimming? Yeah. Yay. Planting superstars. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Coming up. After working on the Wilds farm for a week, Ampika makes a promise. Here's to being a green goddess. And the swap week recharges Kim and Dave's batteries. I feel like we're going back. Like really raring to go. Shopaholic Ampika has learned the true price of her clothes addiction. It takes 7,000 litres of water to make one pair of jeans. I was actually shell-shocked. I thought, where have I been? The Wilds have loved using Ampika's swimming pool, but at what cost? Oh, my God. Bloody hell. Nearly 10,000 for electricity and nearly 5,000 for gas a year. It's the last night of the swap. Date night for the Wilds, and Kim's having a full makeover. Dave's been persuaded to have a massage too. He wasn't keen on the idea, but he soon converted. It might have been something I considered a luxury before now, but I can see the benefit of if I feel in particularly sort of sore or whatever, then I might go and do that again in the future. Ampika's personal makeup artist and hairdresser are giving Kim the final touches. It was surreal. It was really lovely to be all glammed up and they asked me, oh, when was the last time you had your hair and makeup done? And I had to think, and it was, um, it was our wedding about 10 years ago. Is it like skiing where you have to look ahead? <laughs> well, you look great. Oh, thank you. Let's just stop in. <laughs> Back from their second-hand clothes shopping, Ampika and Leslie are in for a surprise. Oh, something smells nice. On their last night, the farm has come to the house. This is so lovely. We just thought we'd do a little party to thank you for all of your hard work. Oh, thank you. I feel really touched. This is really sweet, isn't it, Les? Everything at the table is either off the farm or has been sourced locally. The most exciting thing for me about actually eating these Scotch eggs is I have seen where these animals live. I've stroked these animals, I've fed these animals, and I know what quality of life and existence they have. So it makes the egg, Scotch egg, extra special and extra tasty. So, Ampika, what are you going to take from this experience? Are you going to have any changes? There will definitely be some changes. I'm going to start with the compulsive, obsessional obsession I've got with buying compulsive purchases. And I'm going to start falling in love with like some of my old clothes again in the wardrobe. So, yes, here's to being a green goddess. For date night, the Wilds are back at the posh restaurant where they met the chefs earlier. It's a chance to sample local produce and discuss what they'll be taking away from the week. It was nice to spend a bit of time just me and Kim. And Kim looked amazing. Interesting to see someone else's life and, you know, someone that's maybe not so bothered about the environment. We had a good chat about what we've really enjoyed, what we've learn the most important lesson they've both learned is a very personal one biggest one for me spend more time with the kids and try not to work seven days a week on the farm if possible cheers 
The final day and time for everyone to head home. How's it been? Uh, it's been an experience, Jeff. <laughs> Is that an understatement or an overstatement? No, to be honest, there has been some wonderful parts. We're off. They've arranged to meet up at a hotel halfway between their houses. I know, I was starting to feel a bit nervous. So what were the highlights of the week? For me, it's just been spending time together, just getting yeah. away, because it's been a couple of years since we've even had a week off. You'd be pleased to know I'm proud of me. I've actually got a peel of dress on. Oh, fantastic. Nice While the week was about going green, both families also had to swap budgets. Did you spend it all? Have you got any left? To be honest, if it wasn't for picking fresh vegetables from your holding, we wouldn't have been able to manage on the budget, would we? No. So, but the fact is, we had quite a lot of meals that cost us nothing. Kim wants to pick Ampika's business brain. How can they make more money out of the farm? Lots of people around the world would probably love to see your journey. And more importantly, you've got a strong truth behind it. The more people that get to hear and know about you, um, by advertising, um, by social media, by Facebook shop, that just starts to build up who you are and what you're about. And for Ampika, the week's change of lifestyle has been the start of a bigger, healthier change. I actually got very excited, believe it or not, looking through the vegetable patches. I've never actually had such fresh produce. Moving forward, then maybe you can go to a bit more sort of farmer's markets or 100%. make sure the produce is local, because as soon as it's local, it's fresher and it's yeah. closer and yeah. it's less carbon footprint, hasn't travelled as far. I'm definitely going to take heed of a lot of the experiences that I learned in terms of being kinder to the earth. I've got to, I've got to make changes. It's embarrassing that I've walked around so ignorant. It's been a learning journey for both sides, really, hasn't it? Ideas you've given us and things that we've learned along the way, mm -hmm. I feel like we're going back, like really raring to go and yeah. really make the business work, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So here's to us implementing greener ways. Cheers. Cheers. What a lovely, lovely family. You can just see uh, the passion in their eyes. They've surprised themselves how much they've learned. All oh, these lots of little ways you can be greener. It's been a fantastic experience. I have learned a hell of a lot. It's been very emotional and at times educational. We've come away with some really great ideas in terms of um, streamlining, in terms of social media, in terms of getting a more a bigger online presence. So I can't wait to get started with all of that. Yeah. It's time for everyone to return to their old life and maybe make some changes. Oh, how that lovely. is so beautiful. I've always wanted to have green fingers. I could have a tearful moment. Note. I know you're expanding your business and looking to locate your home to the wild farm, so every penny counts. Please all go and have a family day out on Leslie and I. Oh, look, there's some money there to have a special trip. So it kind of worked out evenly. Because we made her a plan thing, she gave some money to go somewhere nice. We hope you had a fab time in Newcastle. Follow Wild Farm on Instagram, Wild Farm. To keep in touch, lots of love, Kim, Dave, Rosie and Archer. That's lovely, isn't it? Do you think that Ampika will be uh, more eco-friendly? I think she'll be more eco-friendly. So, Leslie, I'm going to start living a little bit more greener. Well, at least the fridge is green. You've made a start. A week away from the farm has taught the wilds there's nothing more important than family time. Rose, look, I found a nice, big, juicy one. Got one in. You can be rich with money, but you can also be really rich with your family that you have, and we're lucky that we've got our lovely family. Next time. I take a lot of pride in building relationships with people that really want to take their journeys to the next level. Got these two degrees, I'm not monetizing off of them. I've racked up over 68 grand worth of debt. That was a big revelation. You forget how beautiful this place is. I do love it here. The work, the place, the people.
How wonderful it's back. The new series of All Creatures Great and Small starts Thursday at nine. Next tonight, Bargain Loving Brits in the Sun.